Welcome to the Goth and the Sloth. I'm your Sloth, Matt. And I'm Luna the Goth. This is the podcast of two friends living a country apart, living our best lives, and doing that thing we do. <laughs> Called life. <laughs> we decided we'd take the first part of this podcast to talk about the COVID-19 pandemic, how it affects our lives, how it affects your lives, and how it's destroying the world. But then on top of that, in the midst of all the COVID-19, massive civil unrest, so we're also touching on that as well. <laughs> Uh, yep. <laughs> Basically chronicling uh, how regular people lived through 2020. So when people look back on this, they can be like, you know what? This podcast really gets it, man. <laughs> <laughs> we get something. <laughs> I don't know if it's it, but yeah. Yeah, we are uh, taking record of what it is like <laughs> to survive a hopefully one once in a lifetime experience <laughs> see you say that but then they said the last financial collapse was a once in a lifetime financial collapse and that yeah, was only let me, 20 let years me ago hope. <laughs> let me hope please oh god so how you been this week i'm still kicking All i right. mean that's really the goal right like every week you're like shall i keep kicking yes yes i shall so it's here about, i am yeah any, any new superpowers? Not yet. I had uh, a scan that involved a nuclear <laughs> injection, or at least they took me to the nuclear injection room, but the, the injection was radioactive. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm still waiting for my new bodily developments. I haven't found them yet, but maybe I need to be in a high stress situation yeah. before I like grow a tentacle. But isn't that the motto of 2020? High stress situation? I, let's not <laughs> test the gods. I would really like to not test the gods. <laughs> How are you doing this week? Oh, it's It's been a week. It's been a week. We'll get into it, but man, it's it's been a week. Matt's had a week, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm drinking on today's podcast. No, you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? Although I'm not drunk yet. It's not the uh, episode of Do Go On where Matt was super drunk. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> I love that it was for the American Super Bowl, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's great. Yeah. Uh, but let's dive into it. What's going on in the greater Virginia area? Uh, so in Virginia, we have uh, 124,779 cases, which is up about 8,000 from last week. Oof. So all of the rates of increase are not as high uh, as last week, but they're still pretty miserable. Yeah. <laughs> Our hospitalizations are 9,798. Uh, so we're up about, or almost 300 from last week. And we have 2,662 deaths, which is up about 100 from last week so i did decide to add one more statistic um because they added it to the dashboard okay and it's we have eight cases of multi-system inflammatory syndrome in uh children that mis mm. um a summary uh, is the centers for disease control and prevention cdc is providing background information on several cases of a recently reported multi-system infl inflammatory syndrome in children, MIS-C, associated with the coronavirus disease, uh, COVID-19. And they have a whole case definition for what this is, and so they're starting to track it, so I figured I would relay that information. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, is that they don't know yet whether this syndrome is specific to children or if it's also in adults, but it just looks different. So uh, for now, we're counting it in children, and I'll see what information comes up later. All Yay. right. <laughs> More horrible. Uh, in, what's that? More horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, when is there less horror? That's, that's not going to be a thing that we witness, it feels like. Um, okay, so... 
on a national level, according to John Hopkins University, we're at 186,000 people um, have died due to the coronavirus, which is horrific. Oof. And according to the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, so IHME, uh, which has been cited by the White House and state officials, the death toll will more than double by January 1st, or it could rise to about 600, 620,000 if states aggressively ease restrictions and people disregard public health guidance. So if we keep going at the rate we're going, they're predicting about 400,000 people will die. Yeah. Um, and if we ease up on everything and just go back to normal about they're predicting about 600,000 people could die. Like nothing here is good. No, that's all bad. <laughs> all bad. Um, we are with it being the beginning of September, we're staring down the barrel of flu season. Mm -hmm. So that's scary. Um, but I'm kind of hopeful and probably naively. So that with all of the restrictions in place for COVID, we might not have a horrific flu season, maybe? I'm I'm with you there, because um, at least in my world, we're not going to have that one asshole that refuses to stay home uh, from work and gets the whole office sick. Yeah. Because we're still 100% from home, so he can just get his family sick and stay away from me, and I can be no. fine. <laughs> Let's just, I mean, no, I don't want you to get sick, but also I don't want anybody else to get sick. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, with people not working in offices as much. Yeah, and I think I mean, um, masks. Kids are still going to spit all over each other. but Yeah, but I think with masks <laughs> and the other restrictions, we might end up having a quiet, knock on wood, regular flu season. Yeah. I think I'm going to be hopeful. Uh, yeah, that's the stroke of hope that I'm going to stick in to today's <laughs> podcast. Uh, hold on to it, guys. <laughs> All right, what about Denver? What's going on in Colorado? Not as bad as you, apparently. So I realize <laughs> that's that, good. I think you guys have double the cases that we have because we're at uh, 58,655 cases. Um, which is up oh, wow. another 2,000. So that's the third or fourth straight week of 2,000. Oh, well, that's not So good. we're not going we're not going up, but we're not going down either. It's, mm -hmm. it's steady. Um, and 7,125 hospitalizations, which is up 180, which is also not good. But the good news is we're at 1,866 deaths. The good news of that is it's only up 23 week to week, which is another all-time low since we've started this podcast. Oh, wow. That's really good. So people are still getting sick, but they're able to get treated, I think is the moral of that story. Okay. I'm here for it. Yeah. Let's do more of that. <laughs> so I'll go for that. In local news... Um, I mentioned a couple podcasts ago about Colorado College and how they had to sequester people in a dorm. Yeah. Yeah, they decided to just have online classes only now. <laughs> yeah, but it was in, the writing was on the wall. <laughs> Writing's so, on the wall for all of these places. Like, yeah. yeah it sucks, but it's kind of where we're at. Yep. And uh, another one is uh, Bandemir Speedway had a big old... Uh, protest about uh, state restrictions and I saw that uh, and I uh, I went into the comments and what, what? okay yeah. all right and uh, yeah the first one already made me stop looking any further but <laughs> oh, okay so it... you learned your lesson <laughs> <laughs> but it's something along the lines of why do any protests that go against the 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 okay ideal become germ factories. Okay. And I'm just like I didn't answer because that doesn't help anything. You just it doesn't help just anything. Walk away. Nobody is there to learn on social media. <laughs> but yeah, it's like do you not understand one every protest I've been to for Black Lives Matter, it's been 100% masks as much as humanly possible. Two, do you not understand the difference between protesting systematic 
uh, racism and police violence and a police abuse against, I want to see cars go fast. <laughs> there's, there's a The difference. answer is no. They don't <laughs> see that difference. They just said it. <laughs> Oh, boy. So that's that's Colorado for you right now. So what's going on uh, in Luna's world? Um, Other than radioactive goo, yeah. uh, I my little spinach plant baby is, is growing, yeah. and that makes me happy. Um, and I also almost killed my Thai basil, but I revived it. Nice. Yay. All right. Like, it's my fault it almost died, but it's also my fault that it lived. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you gotta you gotta learn. You're gonna make a few mistakes. Yeah. But I think yeah. you got it. Um, but other than that, not really much. Like, you know, I had that test, so that was kind of my, my week. I mm-hmm. um, was dealing with that stuff. My partner was in town, so there was a lot of movie watching. Good. And, yeah, I don't know. It's pretty uneventful here. Yeah. How about you? Well, um, I went ahead and got a test because of that show I played, and the entire band all got tested, and we all came back negative, so... Yay! We are all good. I went and actually got a rapid test for the first time done, where you get it I was going like, to say, like, that that was a fast turnaround. Yeah, it was 45 minutes, I got a result. I don't Holy know cow. what that's going to cost me later, we're going to find that out down the line, <laughs> but I was like, you know what, yeah, let's go for the rapid test, because they're like, which test do you want? And I was like... Uh, what options do I have? The one where I don't they don't scoop out my brain, whichever one's that one. Yeah. Yeah. I opt for minimal brain tickling, please. <laughs> and they're like, uh this one, uh this one's the fast turnaround. It's like thirty to forty five minutes. Like, you can do that? All right, yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> That's awesome. So Well good. I'm yeah. glad you guys aren't infected. So yeah, we're all we're all healthy young lads, so that was a big thing for t- this week. Um Yay. And yeah, that's that's about it in my world, I think. Yeah. It's been Yeah, it's been, work stuff. Been work, yeah. <laughs> Lots of dealing with people needing things from you. This is true. I'll just <laughs> I'm just gonna throw this out here without getting into too many details. But you're never the first person to have a problem at your work technology wise so you don't necessarily need to report it if it seems like it's everything's down all right (laughs) someone's definitely (laughs) already reported it (laughs) oh that's really funny i don't need 500 you heard it here first folks (laughs) the it it guru over there has has spoken (laughs) if you can't get into your (laughs) vpn system Text one of your work buddies if they also can't just assume it's down and just wait. You know, <laughs> it's going to come back up. Don't worry about it. Oh, boy. All right. So, uh, yeah, let's get into our topic for today. What is our bright, shiny topic that's going to make the world <laughs> so beautiful this week? Oh, ah, boy. So, um, yeah, we're just going to jump into it. Today we're going to discuss more about the civil unrest in this country. Like uh, Matt mentioned at the top of the show, we set out with the intention that we were going to talk about the coronavirus and living through it, what that's like, and then the world decided to kind of tailspin. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And so uh, we decided to kind of continue chronicling what we're doing, but during this in relation to the unrest as well. So today I'm going to kind of dive back into it. I think uh, the last episode that we recorded that touched primarily on the civil unrest was the very special episode. Mm-hmm. Um, this is another special episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, essentially, just to recap... At some point in 2020, actually, the very specific point in 2020, uh, the world, the country, and somewhat the world, um, decided to, I guess, watch or recognize the simmering, sustaining systemic racism. And once we recognized it, it kind of came to a flashpoint. And so everyone has been 
responding in whatever way that might be, whether it is Black Lives Matter or anti-Black Lives Matter or whatever. Mm -hmm. That is a big part of the civil unrest in our country right now. Um, And it started with the murder of George George Floyd. Yeah. Uh, Since then, tensions have been rising in different cities based largely around the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, which calls for all Americans, including the cops, to care about crimes committed by the cops that result in the death of any person in this country, especially black people. It's it's not a big ask, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we, for context, we are recording this on Friday, September 4th. Uh, if you're from the future, I'd be fascinated to know <laughs> when this falls. <laughs> in the series of events spanning from 2020 to a date unknown in the future um yeah I'd just be fascinated yeah uh, in recent weeks jacob blake was shot in the back seven times by police officers while walking away from them to his car even if he had just committed a violent crime which he hadn't the constitution grants him the right to due process mm-hmm. i just wrote that in there just to remind people <laughs> that you're not supposed to kill people even if they just committed a violent crime correct like you are not supposed to rob people of their due process if they've done something wrong in this particular case he was breaking up a fight the the cops say that he was brandishing a knife all the witnesses say they don't. They found a, a knife in the car later on. People have knives in their cars, mm-hmm. especially in places like Wisconsin. It's not a big damn deal. Yeah. Uh, anyway, tangent done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Jacob Blake was murdered. Since then, there were riots in Kenosha, Wisconsin, uh, armed counter-protesters who called themselves a quote-unquote militia. They're just so special. That's why I say it like that. Special militia. They're so cute. (laughs) (laughs) Appeared in Kenosha to protect property. Uh, One of these counter-protesters shot a man in the head with an assault rifle, ran away from the scene while being chased, tripped on his own, rolled onto his back and opened fire, shooting two more people. Two of the three people shot were killed. Mm -hmm. This individual, who I will not name, uh, was instantly named a hero among Trump supporters and right-wing media. Trump refused to condemn his action, supporting the notion that he acted in self-defense. Pause for dramatic purposes. (laughs) While there have been other developments, namely in Portland, I'm going to pause there uh, because I'd like to draw attention to Letetra Widman. I may be saying her name wrong, um, but she is a sister of Jacob Blake. Mm -hmm. She made a powerful statement, uh, which can be found online with a simple Google search. Yep. Tis what it is for. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And so I'm going to take a moment to focus on a couple parts of the statement, two parts of the statement. Um, so the first part of the statement is, or the first quote is, and when you say the name Jacob Blake, make sure you say father, make sure you say cousin, make sure you say son, make sure you say uncle, but most importantly, make sure you say human. Human life Let it marinate in your mouth, in your mind. A human life, just like every single one of y'all. End quote. Yeah. I'm gesturing to the sky, but you can't see it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So when I think of these words, I kind of have to step back and think. Because to me, it's like, I try to take a step back anytime I'm reading or watching anything that makes me emotional because I'm like, I try to assess why am I having this emotion? Mm -hmm. How do I feel about what's going on? What is the objective view of this situation versus my subjective view, et cetera? Yeah. Critical thinking, (laughs) (laughs) y'all. So I did that and I thought, well, why would anyone feel the need to say something like this in public? Of course he's human. Like, why would that need to be said? But we all know the answer to that yeah. question. Yeah. Being born with dark skin could be considered a curse if you only consume mainstream media 
and listen to teachers in public schools, etc. If you're born with dark skin, you are worthless, as told by everything that we consume from birth. Yep. Um, you're told you can't achieve beauty, grace, or innocence, and people automatically think you're dirty, stupid, etc. This isn't new. Yep. Like, we... We know these things. We don't have to say these things. And yet when we say these things, people balk. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go into a little bit of history briefly. In 1851, a quack of a Southern quote unquote doctor, uh, Dr. Cartwright, published, which means it was published by other humans, Mm -hmm. uh, volumes of medical information titled diseases and peculiarities of the negro race in it were some wild and false musings justifying the idea that the white race white race is the superior one or better one there's a word for that it's called white supremacy yes. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason i feel like and i don't know if matt you've ran into this but i feel like this year people are having a hard time remembering the definition of white supremacy yes absolutely this year well it's many like, years but this year in particular that's true that's true this isn't the first year but it's like when people say that what that whites are better that is by definition white supremacy i'm not saying whites are better i'm just saying we are just genetically more enhanced <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's not like, white oh supremacy. Ah, oh, Lord. So, um, in this series of essays, uh, he wrote that there was a disease called drapetomania, or the disease causing Negroes to run away. This document does note that to avoid this disease taking hold, Treat your Negroes with kindness. Feed them, clothe them, allow them to have families, but make sure they cannot run about at night and visit their neighbors. If this statement that I just said makes you feel somewhat sympathetic to this person, please take a second and ask yourself why. Yeah. Um, Now that sounds like instructions on keeping care of a dog. Yep. (laughs) Not a human. (laughs) Not a human. In fact, most dogs are treated better. Yeah. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, So here's a quote. Uh, Before the Negroes run away, unless they are frightened or panic struck, they become sulky and dissatisfied. The cause of the sulkiness and dissatisfaction should be inquired into and removed, or they are apt to run away or fall into the Negro consumption. When sulky and dissatisfied without cause, the experience of those on the line and elsewhere was was decidedly in favor of whipping them out of it as a preventative measure against absconding or other bad conduct. It was called whipping the devil out of them. End quote. So you might hear this and think, damn. Yeah. (laughs) Times were fucked back then. Now, is this the yeah. guy, I don't know if you're getting to it or not, but is this the guy that uh, forcibly uh, did medical experiments on his slaves? Because I was I just watching know. a video I, about a guy that did that. I don't, I couldn't say for sure. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, but I'm, I, there were more than one of these doctors that thought this yeah. way. So I don't know if this particular person did, um, Cartwright in particular. I know that. Uh, he was desperately working with the governmental elected officials in the South to help them justify slavery to their people and to the North. Um, but I don't know what he did to his slaves in particular. Yeah. Cause this guy, uh, again, I don't remember his name, but he was, th- that's where you've fought, like follow the trail back to uh, black people. Don't feel as much pain is mm-hmm. from his studies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and yeah it's bullshit yeah absolutely um yeah it's i mean all of these examples both of these examples that we're talking about they obviously didn't see black people as humans Mm -hmm. and that's 
not necessarily an antiquated idea. Uh, fast forward to 2016, researchers at the University of Virginia, UVA out there in Charlottesville, uh, quizzed white residents to see what sorts of whimsical fantasies they believed about the difference between white people and black people, which leads to, or is related to what you were just talking about. Uh, The study was published by the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Uh, Here are a few of the things that they asked about. Black people age more slowly than white people. Black people's nerve endings are less sensitive than whites. Black people's blood coagulates more quickly than whites. Whites have larger brains than blacks. Whites have a better sense of hearing than blacks. Black skin is thicker than whites. Blacks have a more sensitive sense of smell than whites. Whites have a more efficient respiratory system than blacks. Black couples are significantly more fertile than white couples. Let that one sink in for a second. Blacks are better at detecting movement than whites. Blacks have stronger immune systems than whites. So those are the things I asked. (laughs) Here are a few of the notable results. Okay. So in general, 23% of residents believe that blacks aged more slowly than whites. 39% of residents believe black people's blood coagulates more quickly than whites. 58% believe that black skin is thicker than whites. 20% believe that blacks have a more sensitive sense of smell than whites. 18% believe blacks are better at detecting detecting movement than whites. These are doctors. (laughs) If we look at residents only... Because uh, this is like all throughout the resident experience, so first year, second year, third year. Mm-hmm. And so if we look at the longest amount of time they've been a resident, 14%, like they're about to be, have, like, be practicing without guidance. 14% believe that blacks age more slowly than whites. 25%, 25% believe that black skins are... Blacks' skin is thicker than whites. 11% believe that blacks are better at detecting movement than whites. Uh, 7% believe that black couples are significantly more fertile than white couples. I I mean, it's just, you can look at the study yourself. Mm -hmm. I mentioned all the information you need to be able to find it. This was in 2016. So, what hope is there for a future? where the public could see us black people and people of color as human if the most formally educated people in this country can barely comprehend comprehend that humanity comprehend our humanity as it relates to theirs like it the most i mean to be a doctor you think about when you think about the highest educated people in the country you think doctors lawyers yep, yep and that's not necessarily true of course there are tons of other professions where you go to school for a very long time but these are the people that are in charge of taking care of people yeah absolutely and they barely believe <laughs> <laughs> that black people have a human existence that's relative to theirs it's just my brain it hurts anyway so uh latetra called for the world to see her brother as a human Mm -hmm. just that it's a simple request and there has to be i mean i guess rather than being horrifically negative i'm just going to say there has to be a way forward where people can look at people that don't look like them and say oh yes that is a human maybe i should treat that person and their body with respect yeah the second quote um i'd like to talk about so it's uh, 
it's a little broken, but, uh, quote, so many people have reached out to me telling me that they're sorry that this happened to my family. Well, don't be sorry, because this has been happening to my family for a long time, longer than I can account for. She go on, goes on to name, um, end quote, she goes on to name people who have been violently murdered throughout history, including Emmett Till, Philando Castile, and others. Quote, I'm not sad, I'm not sorry, I'm angry, and I'm tired. I am numb. I have been watching police murder people who look like me for years. End quote. So, this struck me because it's relatable yeah. on a personal level. Yeah. But also, I've been seeing a lot of things, I've, ever since the civil unrest started, um, I've seen a lot of people say things like, I'm sorry. And while I genuinely understand and accept where those friends are coming from when they extend the words of apology, I mean, that's what you look for when you're hurting. You hope that someone relates to you, can f understand where you're coming from, and I'm sorry is a way for it, us to express that. But those two words have begun to feel like weapons to me lately, and this is just my personal experience. They leave like these tiny lacerations on my body. I'm sorry over the course of this year has come to feel like the last offering available before turning away again and letting us burn in a system that works against us so well. The system works against us so well that the most educated people in this country can barely see us. Mm -hmm. It works so well that we can't get angry or cry hysterically in public without inviting judgment that isn't extended to people who look naturally kinder, naturally more innocent, and naturally more sympathetic because of their skin. The tears of white women are almost as power powerful as an AR-15. The system works so well that black women are four times more likely to die in child, childbirth. Black people and people of color have higher interest rates, lower access to wealth, education, and basic resources like clean water and food in certain parts of the country. The system works so well that even when a massive portion of the country wants change, the system rages on, raises a hand to pat us on the head for daring to think critically, and returns to normal. So the system works so well that a blatant white supremacist can operate in our government without repercussions for four plus years. So I agree with Letitra. I'm tired and I'm numb. So I want to close this, uh, though, by something relatively positive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I am thankful for people who haven't turned their back on BIPOC communities. Um, I'm thankful for people who are still desperate to learn and grow, no matter how uncomfortable. And for those who don't bend over backwards in an attempt to justify the actions of right-wing militias and vigilantes who take glee in killing others, especially if they don't share the same views as them. I don't think change is impossible but to be honest i feel that most days i struggle with that concept so i am very thankful for the people who are out there fighting to abolish police brutality and reduce the number of people killed without due process in this country and that's all i'll say <laughs> <laughs> how you doing <laughs> yeah that's um that's a lot <laughs> Um, it is it's a it's a whole lot um but i felt like i needed to say it and we have a podcast so absolutely i get that out there and you said i should yeah so blame matt if you don't like it because <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i just yeah you should have a spot to uh speak and you know get your thoughts out there and it's <clears throat> you know uh, it's it, the system. <laughs> I'm trying to even think of where I want to go from here, but, uh, yeah, it feels like the system is fighting back even harder. The more that you try and push against it. Cause you, yeah. the cops theoretically 
should be on their best behavior right now, right? Mm-hmm. They're under the bubble, and yet they still just go ahead and shoot a guy in the back seven times. Yeah, they they don't have to be. They don't have to be be on their best behavior because they don't have to be held accountable. Yeah, and that's that's the biggest problem is accountability because. I didn't necessarily look into Jacob Blake too much, but I guarantee, without even looking, that his uh, uh, murderers are probably still on the force uh, without oh, any yeah, sort of... Oh, yeah, administrative leave. Yep. So mm-hmm. that's, you know, that's terrible, and that's just accountability with police is just bare minimum <laughs> that I think people are asking defunding the police is a big ask but at least like if you fire a guy maybe um or if you you know shoot a guy maybe you get arrested until we get figure out what's going on right Um, it's it's not and the problem is that as the system has been fighting back against these calls for justice the police in some areas have not only doubled down, but they've created partnerships with right wing mm-hmm. quote unquote militias to quote unquote help them do their job. Yeah. And it's like that is beyond illegal. Yeah. Like we have proof of it in Kenosha between police officer and the group. Yep. And it's just. It, there's so much going on right now that no one is able to take a breath and think about it and talk about it because while that was happening, Portland was happening. Yep. We have a group of people in this country who, I mean, two groups of people in this country who are sanctioned to create violent, to commit violent acts against other Americans. We have the police and we have these armed right wing groups yeah. that the right-wing media and the president himself are refusing to condemn and are even praising. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not just not condemning. So, yeah, they're, I mean, they're outright praising these people. And so I just, I think right now, I toggle between numb and, like, desperate yeah. that something... Something has to happen to change this because right now it's just ramping up every day. There's more every day. It's gotten worse. I mean, the person that uh, killed the shot and killed the Trump supporter in Portland was killed during arrest. Yeah. Um. I I just I yeah I think. Obviously, no one is going to listen to this podcast and change their mind. Yeah. No one's mind is going to be changed by me pouring my heart out. No yeah, one's going to... <laughs> no one's... Maybe people who are like-minded might get something from it, maybe. But no one's no one's going to wake up one day and, and just be like, Oh, yeah, I should think a little bit more critically about how this impacts me and my future and my kids' future. Like, I just... I don't know what the answer is but i think that i guess i'm just i'm hopeful that people will just take a minute to consider other people's experiences rather than just jumping at the gun to defend people and going what if and but what about and it's like look i don't care how much you love guns i don't even care that you have them I just don't want people to be murdered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, why does that become like this personal attack on your existence? Mm-hmm. It's it's wild and horrific, and I have a very low threshold for how much I can handle with it right now. Especially not feeling well, it just makes me want to instantly punch people. <laughs> <laughs> My buffer is gone, <laughs> but I just. I don't know. I I have to find hope here and there, and I do. And we have to take care of each other in our communities. We have to get through this mentally, physically. 
Um, and that needs to be the focus for a lot of people right now. Yeah. And just, just consider if you're, if you're tempt, if you're just tempted to when another black person will inevitably get shot for existing. If you're tempted to say, I'm sorry, just think about why you're saying that. Is it for you or for them? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Matt. I nah, keep putting you in good. a terrible position. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I want to talk about the NBA a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's definitely touch on that. Because I, I think it brings up an interesting idea. So if you didn't know, uh, the bu- the w- Milwaukee Bucks, uh, if you're out of the country, Milwaukee is in Wisconsin, um, mm-hmm. they decided to sit out game five of the playoffs. And they're not a team that gets to the playoffs very often. Right. And without the consent of the players' union or anything, they decided to sit out the game. And uh, that then moved on to... Te- a lot the postponing the entire game post uh postponing the entire playoffs um the WNBA teams showing up uh kneeling at the beginning of the game all wearing uh t-shirts with seven bullet holes in the back and again this is all against the players union or without the consent of the players union so they're risking their jobs they're risking their careers they're risking a lot to make this oh, stand yeah. mm-hmm and I think that's important because uh, I think the NBA, unlike other sports, rides on the back of people of color, I think, the most. I would agree with that, um, yeah. Specifically black people. But it's mm-hmm. um, they saw j- massive racism in the NBA up until the 70s of like not hiring many black players. Not you know It was th- basically segregated until the 70s, which is insanely late when you... <laughs> really think about it it really is (laughs) um and it's yeah it's you know a mostly people of color in nba and it's taking a big stand and possibly again hurting their careers to do it and that that i think is a strong sign of solidarity solidarity and protest because a protest without sacrificing anything isn't really anything yeah absolutely Absolutely. And as such, I mean, you. I'm glad you mentioned that, like, with the NBA, um, in the NBA bubble, mm-hmm. the organization allowed them to choose from a preset list of things that they can put on their jersey yeah. as part of sanctioned protest. And like you said, sanctioned protest is performative and it might bring awareness to something but it's not really doing anything yeah absolutely um and of course the right wing i think it was jared kushner specifically uh was like oh it must be nice they they make so much money they can afford to not go to work one night yeah and the problem with that argument and i think it was i can't remember who but it's someone late night um had mentioned this they like this is the same people the the same person that's saying okay well if you're rich you can't protest if you're poor you can't like how rich do you have to be to be able to protest and you get the fucking point that it's a protest yeah do you have to uh (laughs) submit your uh 401k before you protest for it to count like do you have to be in a certain (laughs) It's like, is there a certain amount of money that you lose that makes it a protest? Like, what there is, the answer is no. There is no definition that's going to work for the opposition to see, to sanction the protest. And the point, that's not the point. We don't yeah. care if they sanction the protest. The point is change. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some really great videos out this past week about these things i think john oliver's was pretty good yeah i'm sure trevor noah has a great one um 
I, I can't remember what I've seen at this point, but there is this really fantastic video um, that choked me up and it was, I don't know the person's role, some sort of administrative or coach leader role okay. uh, for the LA Clippers. Yes. Yeah. The coach of the LA Clippers. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Look up that video because it was incredibly moving and his whole point was basically like there are a lot of people talking about fear Mm -hmm. um and the rnc specifically was based around fear yeah and yet it's not them who fear living or just being in this country it's like what do you do yeah no one fears white people so why are we afraid yeah I mean, I, I know why. It's a deep-seated, uh, so we took everything from everyone, so we're worried about people taking it back, and mm-hmm. or people treating us like we've treated them. Right, yeah. yeah. But, It'll be scary if you've never <laughs> seen it before. <laughs> so, there, yeah, that's an absolutely amazing speech that he made, off the top of his head, too. But Yeah, yeah it's just... He, and you can just tell that the pain runs deep, and I guess what's been difficult for me since Jacob Blake is that a lot of the performative stuff has even gone away. Yeah. So it's like we don't even have the performative like <laughs> protests. Now it's just people begging you to care. Yeah. And people aren't really showing up a lot. But there are in other ways <laughs> yeah. that I'm hoping that I'm just not seeing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, there's a bit of the performative in the pro sports world, too, because the uh, baseball and hockey both suspended games. But was that really doing anything to just suspend a game based on another team making the uh, big statement? Or is it just being like, we're also part of this? Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah, now, now I can see, yeah, the performative, and it can be really easily co-opted to just be like, no, yes. we're also good. Don't worry about it. And... Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it certainly brought a lot of attention to it, mm-hmm. and all the credit goes to the WNBA and the NBA. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, it's a thing. Although, yeah, there's some good that comes out of it, like, uh. All the NBA owners uh, are going to find ways to make all their stadiums polling places come November. That is awesome. I did hear about that. That's great. So there's movement that way. And I think the Bucks made an interesting precedent that I think we should follow up on. That um, every time a cop shoots somebody, whatever team's playing for that state has to take a loss the next game. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> maybe that'll get people to care, rich people. Yeah, what if... Well, uh, I think it's almost like I just don't think they should play. Like, they yeah. shouldn't play that day. They should not get revenue from the city, from all of these people going to the game. Like, take the financial hit every yeah. time. I also just like taking a loss. Up. <laughs> huh? I just uh, like them taking a loss, though, too. What if, uh, you know, your team finally makes it to the Super Bowl... A cop shoots somebody, and now they have to forfeit the Super Bowl. That's going to get some people behind pissed yeah, off at the cops. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I, I could see that certainly making a difference. Damn, at this point, I'm like, whatever. Whatever we need to do, I don't care. We just need to do it. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's still baffling me, to me, and maybe I just had a different upbringing and different uh, education, but that how people can see uh, anybody less than themselves, or you know, as a lesser person. Yeah. Um, it's just it's and, ingrained. I yeah. mean, you really have to unlearn it, depending on where how you grew up and where you are. Even even black people have to unlearn it. Mm-hmm. Like there is a lot of self hatred if you grow up in a very white area and you're told over and over and over and over Mm -hmm. that that is right you are wrong then you have to reconcile that as you grow up 
luckily there are tons of resources now, but depending on where you are, that might be difficult to access. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I just, there's just so much. It's a wealth of information. I mean, it could be its own mega podcast if we just <laughs> talked about race stuff, but it's, it is pertinent to living in 2020 yeah, through absolutely. this pandemic. Um, and this election and this everything everything is colliding in 2020 it is uh it's the power man 5000 this is what it's like when worlds <laughs> collide oh, no. <laughs> oh god because i just <sighs> imagine just everything smashing together at one point and then whatever's left out of the rubble it will be the new america <laughs> yeah, for real. I'm just like, I've been listening to Civil War podcasts a lot, and there are a lot of differences about that time and this time. Yeah. Um, so I'm not going to draw parallels, but it's just really interesting to watch these events unfold. It's certainly historic, whatever it is. Yeah. It's certainly historic. Although I don't see a necessarily a Civil War breaking out, only because it's you can't draw lines. I have some theories. I understand what you're saying, and I agree that there was a clear geographic difference between the two groups, but um, one conversation with one person changed everything about how I view about (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, I will not say that on the air, though, because y'all don't need to be as paranoid as I am. Well, I think that moves us into distractions. What are we distracting ourselves from, from the inevitable heat death of the world? <laughs> uh, so I rewatched uh, The Haunting of Hill House this week, and it is still perfect. It is. I absolutely adore that story. It's because I finished the book, okay. and then I was like, okay, now I'm going to re- rewatch it. And it's, I mean, the book has nothing to do with what <laughs> the show <laughs> Although the the house itself is the is the through line, like the characters aren't the same, but the house is, and it's it's just so gorgeous. And I'm obsessed with episode six, where it looks like it's one continuous take for the whole episode, but mm-hmm. really it's five long takes. It's so beautifully choreographed, like it's. Uh, I'm definitely watching it again at some point. <laughs> like I just really enjoy it. What about you? What are you distracting yourself with? Um, haven't been watching as much, although I did finally finish for good Agents of Shield, so I no longer have to subject myself to that show. Finally. Spoiler, it does not get any better at any point in time. So <laughs> don't watch it uh, if you, you have you, already been, not been watching it. You have got to learn to let things go, Matt. I cannot. <laughs> Think of how many hours you could have <laughs> saved if you just said you know, wait, this show sucks, and stopped watching. <laughs> but it ties into the whole Marvel thing. One, I was ho- still hoping one time they're going to do something that finally really ties it in. No. And then go back and watch it if that's the case. But save your <laughs> happiness. It's so important to save your happiness. <laughs> uh, but instead of shows, I've been listening to a lot of music lately. Oh, cool. um, specifically a uh, Lord and the alkaline trio. Oh, wow. She nice. don't think overlaps very much, but they definitely do. They both have really interesting lyrics and really thought provoking lyrics and a way to say like a phrase you've heard a million times, but make it interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah, I've been listening to a lot of them, which has kind of inspired me to maybe try and write stuff again too. Good. So hopefully I can get around to that. I'm going to try and make time for it. Um, but I have some ideas for songs, and I hopefully can write something original for the first time in like 10 years. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. So that's, that, I hope it works out. That And then last night I took a weird deep dive into something horrible, and hopefully not to do that again. Have you ever heard of Unit 731? No. It was a secret... Japanese medical facility during World War II that would uh, do experiments on prisoners of war. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I know that those things happened, but I didn't know the name of, like, 
the place where it happened. Yeah, there's a, it, it came out in like 2003, apparently. They kept it secret until then. And some really horrible stuff that happened there. Yep. So, yep. Uh, Pretty horrible things happen on prisons on our soil, even. This is that also involve true. That medical testing. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah not surprised <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i i, I really i weirdly ran into that <laughs> last night and took a Ugh. deep dive and you need something else to distract yourself with <laughs> you distract yourself from your distractions right <laughs> uh well i think that brings us to uh, everyone's favorite part of the podcast only in a pandemic and major civil unrest. Mostly civil unrest. <laughs> Mostly civil unrest. Yeah, for real. Oh, boy. Stories that can only happen during a pandemic and or massive civil unrest. <laughs> what do you got? So, only in a pandemic. I think it's mostly pandemic side. Uh, do I find movies about viruses particularly distressing? Before, like, I would watch horror movies that might have to do with some sort of pathogen and be like, oh, cool. Yay, horror movie. And I've legit passed up watching a couple because I would read the description. It's like, and this crazy virus breaks out and blah, de, blah, de, blah. And I'm like, <laughs> nah. Nah, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I don't really want to watch that right now. <laughs> well, then you made me watch It Comes at Night. <laughs> that was good, though. <laughs> That was really good. I really like the amount of main characters that die. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What's your only a pandemic story? It's so only in a pandemic will I enjoy a, probably a subpar movie just because it's something new. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Because <laughs> I went and saw New Mutants in theaters. I enjoyed it, but it's probably not as good as I thought it was just because it's like, I'm in a theater <laughs> and I'm watching a new movie. Oh, yeah. And it's like, no, it can't be bad because it's a new movie. <laughs> There's no way it's right. bad. And I'm going to get it on Blu-ray watch and I'm going to be like, no, this is real bad. Yeah. Actually, I, I, yeah, really don't I think haven't it's seen as, it yet. It's not as bad as people really make it out. There's, um, It's not great. But it's, um, hold on, the cat decides she wants to now play with the mic stand. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not great, but it's uh, good low-tier X-Men, if that makes any sense. So yeah. out of the really low-tier X-Men, it's probably one of the better ones of those. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's like, it's... It's like better than Dark Phoenix and Last Stand and Apocalypse, but it's not First Class or Days of Future Past. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I will see it at some point. I keep thinking about it and then I'm like, ah, no. Ah, no. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll set your expectations a little bit. It's not a horror movie like they make it out to be. So just... Take that expectation. Great. <laughs> I'd say it's closer to Girl Interrupted with Superpowers. Awesome. <laughs> I just, yeah, I don't, I don't. I'm glad you went. I'm glad you had a good time at the movies. I actually also <laughs> went to the movies. I went to see Tenet. Um, oh, yeah? How's that? Uh, mm. <laughs> Was it as good as Nine Int? Oh, my God. Get out. Uh. I will. I will no longer tolerate these <laughs> dang jokes. <laughs> yeah, I stole that joke. Not gonna lie. <laughs> so let's wrap up this episode with our hermit level on the Leonardo DiCaprio scale. On a one being the man in the iron mask, you're locked in a cell by yourself. You haven't seen anybody in like six months, and that was only the guy to bring you food. <laughs> 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 or on the other level, you are. Um, Let's go with your Romeo and Juliet, <laughs> and you're just running around um, Fair Verona with all your buddies <laughs> and listening to horrible 90s music <sighs> and, and spouting Shakespeare awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I think uh, I'm a nine still. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just perpetually nine. I did see humans. Uh so maybe that's an eight point five, but like I have like been ultra hermity. So when I haven't been seeing humans, like I haven't been checking my messages. I'm just like, I don't know. I feel like I'm still a nine. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. What about you? Uh, probably like a seven or an eight. Not going to lie. Like I went to the movie, mm-hmm. but there's like one other dude in the theater. And obviously I'm not going to talk to him. Yeah. No. What? And I did like the touchless getting my snack so i like didn't talk at all at the entire it's a theater. dream like, isn't it i love it <laughs> right <laughs> um so like i don't even count that as a social outing it was mostly just like a, a by myself outing so i don't yeah and then like I, I hung out with the band and we had our normal wednesday but not a lot really yeah yeah i hear you it happens <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, let's wrap it up. Where can people find you if they want to uh, see how your superpowers are developing? <laughs> it's uh, at Luna underscore Minui, so L-U-N-A underscore M-I-N-U-I-T. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram, and you can find our page uh, at Goth and Sloth on Twitter and Instagram as well, and Gmail. Yeah, what about you and all your all your many things? All my many thanks. So you can get me on Twitter at wizard underscore Matt, on Instagram, wizard cosplay. Um, my band is Leonardo Leonardo Band on SoundCloud and Facebook. And my YouTube channel is Matt the Pharaoh Wizard, where I'm taking a bit of a break. But feel free to watch some of the older videos. <laughs> yeah. It's so, <so> good. <laughs> YouTube channel is still there, even if you're not pushing out content right now. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that'll do it for another episode. All right, y'all. Please wash your hands. And treat people like humans. Oh, yeah. That'd be nice.